Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy Ray Gapus, joining you for another teaching and learning session on our pointers, okay, for the next generation NPLEX RM. And this time around, this is our pointer session number 13. And of course, before we get to start, I'd like to invite you to join our hundreds and thousands of nurses who pass their next generation NPLEX worldwide through the Ray Gapu system test taking tool. And we have the latest technology to assist you to pass your exam. Give us a call at 0906-201-9383 or send me an email, info at ragapusreview.com. Now let's learn from one of those nurses who recently passed the next generation NCLEX. Here's her story. Okay, now let's learn from Ms. Abigail Vicencio, USRN for the State Board of New York and she passed the next generation NCLEX RN plus June 5, 2023. Now, she's a graduate of Our Lady of Fatima University. So here's what Abigail is going to tell us. First of all, I want to thank God for this blessing and also to my family for the support. I am beyond grateful for the Ray A. Gapas Review System Manila team, Sir Ray, and all of the my mentors who provided us knowledge, strategies, and motivation. It's hard to find a review center for nurses who are living outside the Philippines because of time difference. Luckily, I found Ray A. Gapas Review System who fits my time since I'm working full-time in the morning and studying at night. But with discipline and time management, I figured out how to balance things. Excellent. So she's telling us you have to learn how to manage your time. Now, all of my hard work really paid off. NCLEX is really hard, but with the help of God, family, and Ray Agapas Review System team, I passed my NCLEX at 85 questions. That's a fit. Congratulations, Abigail. Thank you once again, Sir Ray, and your team. Of course, our team of very, very competent, well-trained mentors have been with us. Some of them are with us for more than a decade already, and they're now joining us in this mission-centered and world-changing endeavor, and that is to make the life of every nurse we encounter better. That's by passing their tests and gaining entry into better opportunities where they're called to serve God's purpose. Till our next passer. Okay, now, the first thing that you have to ask yourself when you are preparing for the next generation entrance is, what should I study? The key is having a sense of focus. You don't study everything that you took up in your Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. That will not help. That's a sure recipe for failure. Now, to streamline the things that you want, that you should study rather, here are the topics that I'd like to highlight. First and foremost, the preschool client. Now, remember this functional concept. Preschool clients have fear of body mutilation, so which simply means they don't want to see themselves bleeding. So to encourage their cooperation to any procedure that you're preparing them to or preparing them for, focus on having a standby band aid, just in case that bleeding may occur, then you can actually immediately stop it. And of course, if the patient would ask, will it be painful? You have to be honest, but make sure you don't use the word pain because anticipation of pain increases their pain experience, okay, in terms of severity. Therefore, use the word pressure instead. So tell the child you will have a sense of pressure during the procedure. And then if it's possible, you can involve the parents if the child will have catheter insertion and the parents, for example, are healthcare workers, you can involve them in inserting the catheter for the child. You can use play, demonstrate using dolls, allow the child to touch the demonstration tools that you prepared for the procedure, and then before touching the child, ask permission that you're going to touch them. And then definitely, after they have cooperated, you will need to give them specific praise. And if they need to carry out 
procedures like positioning themselves, offer suggestions, but not command. And provide them with choices while maintaining the rules. For example, okay, if the discharge instruction would entail that the patient, meaning the preschool client, would need to brush the teeth regularly because they have been given anticonvulsants. So ask the client, would you want to brush your teeth before watching your favorite TV show or after you watch it? So the choice should be, should always lead to their complying with the rules or the discharge instruction. Like if they will have injections, would you would need to ask them, would you want it on your shoulder or on your butt? So the end point would definitely be that they will have the injections anyway. Or if you are going to give them oral medications, you will need to ask them, would you want to take your medications with water or with milk if it's not contraindicated? Okay, that's the way to obtain the preschoolers' cooperation. Next, hyperkalemia. Now, notice when you speak of hyperkalemia, think about peak T waves. To remind you of the peak T waves, tall peak T waves, remember about the Eiffel Tower, okay? That's the Eiffel Tower shape of T wave that you have there. And notice that in hyperkalemia, you have widened QRS. The normal is 0.08 to 0.10, meaning to say 2 to 2.5 small squares, okay? This one is more than 2 to 2.5 small squares. So that's a widened QRS complex. And then the distance from the P to the R interval should only be a maximum of one large square or three to five small squares. However, for this patient, you have more than one large squares or more than five small squares because you have five small squares in one large squares on your ECG paper. So this simply means that there is a prolonged PR interval. So the three things, tall peak T wave, widened QRS, and prolonged PR interval, these three things define hyperkalemia, okay? Now, take note. What treatment medications do you expect? Remember, CIA. The first line of treatment would be your calcium gluconate that's given to protect the cardiac cells from hyperactivity. Second would be insulin and glucose combination. What's the purpose of insulin in a patient with hyperkalemia? Insulin will facilitate the entry of potassium from the blood into the cells, thereby decreasing potassium levels in the blood. And of course, your albuterol, which I know is something that's more likely identified with patients with asthma because it's a bronchodilator. However, your albuterol would enhance the effects of your insulin and glucose combination. So in essence, your albuterol helps lower potassium levels. But take note, your albuterol can potentially cause high, hyper, um, sorry, can potentially cause, pay particular attention to this, palpitation or increase in the patient's heart rate. So in essence, the priority intervention if your patient who is taking albuterol, okay, in your patient who's taking albuterol would be monitoring the heart rate. There you go. That's one thing that I'm trying to think about when I'm highlighting your Albuterol. So once again, in hyperkalemia, CIA, okay? So your calcium gluconate, insulin plus glucose plus albuterol. All of this will help decrease the potassium levels of the patient. So once again, monitor the patient's heart rate so there could be an increase in the pulse of the patient. Okay, so let's move on. Hyperkalemia is characterized by, remember, to summarize it, here's a functional concept. Tall peak T wave, widened QRS complex, and prolonged PR interval. Okay, now let's talk about toys for infants. Here's a guideline through a functional concept. Infants should be provided with, with toys that stimulate the senses. When you say toys that stimulate the senses, this could be toys that stimulate the sense of touch, like soft dolls, toys that stimulate the vision of the patient, like colorful books, toys that stimulate the hearing of the patient, like a mobile or any toy uh, that makes sound, like for example, a plastic or a rubber duck that squeaks, okay? And then toys that can be moved. Take note, older infants on from the seven months onwards would love to move certain things. So toys that can be moved include 
um, large soft blocks that they can manipulate, large beads could be allowed for infants, and nesting toys. Now, an example of nesting toys would be dolls of different sizes in which you can put the smaller doll into the bigger doll, like the, the rattan dolls, okay? So, which simply means these are called nesting toys. This will help enhance fine motor skills of the infant or the baby. And of course, the second important thing that you have to remember when you're taking the next generation and for example, is that studying with the use of technology. You have to learn how to navigate the questions using technology. Do not use just paper-based tests. No, the next generation NPLEX will require you to navigate through the different types of questions, okay? So here at the Ray Gapu system, our, our learning tools are published by renowned international publishers and our latest learning tool includes the Ray A. Gapus system for shells. Now, to avail of this for free, give us a call or send us a message. And of course, we will raffle off free access to our four shells on June 25. So register for our event. And of course, the third and the most important thing that you have to focus on when you're preparing for next generation NPLEX should be a conducive environment. Here at the Ray Gapu system, we have our own NPLEX RN simulation room where our students learn how to navigate through the different types of questions. And of course, our very, very intimate face-to-face -face classes during our quick pick session, okay? So may I invite you to join us for our next generation NPLEX RN Plex, the most flexible test prep class for the NPLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499. You can choose to have your schedules on weekdays either a.m. only or p.m. only, or holy classes on weekends or half-day classes on weekends, you may actually give us a call at mobile number 09062019383. Now, NPLEX RNPLEX is designed to cater to working nurses, so you can have a choice of live face-to-face -face classes, live virtual class, on-demand unlimited video recorded lessons, QBank plus our three books, our NGN strategies and sample questions, and of course, 24 hours quick fix session. So this is your mentor, your fact check by the Rega Pus saying thank you for joining me in this session and till our next session. Remember, a functional concept a day keeps your NCLEX RN fears away.